Yo, 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 Pastor Jay's here. How are you? Are you okay? I hope you are okay. I want you to know that you are always in my prayers. Let me ask you a question. When is the most challenging time in your life? It might be a physical pain or financial hardship or family conflict or relationship matter. However, what I think the most difficult moment is when hope is disappears. We can endure suffering if there's hope for healing. We can face financial struggles if we believe that things will be improved. Yet, when we lose hope and can't see a path forward, we often feel discouraged and want to give up. Here's a good example. In 2010, 33 trillion miners were trapped 700 meters underground for 69 days. When all hope seemed lost, they saw a faint light through a small drill hole, and that light became their lifeline. Then that, from that moment, they prayed and encouraged each other, holding on to the hope of rescue, which finally came 69 days later. This instant became a global symbol of hope and perseverance. Just as hope is powerful, we too must have hope as we move forward. October is the start of a new fiscal year and the beginning of the autumn. As we press forward, let's embrace hope and believe that we can bear fruit and overcome our challenges. Amen? Amen. Just like a tunnel has an end, so do the hardship in our lives. Amen? Amen to that. The Bible assures us that we have a future and hope. Let's explore God's promise together today. Take a look at Lamentation chapter 3, verse 21 through 23. Let's read together. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have a hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. Jeremiah's nation had fallen, and the Israelites were taken into captivity. Yet, in this desperate situation, Jeremiah still believed in God's love and mercy. As seen in Lamentation chapter 3, verse 21 through 23, he had hope despite the devastation around him. Eventually, leading his nation back and rebuilding Jerusalem. This same God who acted in the past will continue to work today and tomorrow. Amen? Amen. The reason Jeremiah had hope is that, first, because he believed in God's loving kindness. Let's read chapter 3, verse 22. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. Amen. Yes, God's mercy and compassion are limitless. Do you believe God, who is always merciful, watches over us and offers us boundless forgiveness? I hope you believe that. That's why we do not fall. We do not fail. Let me introduce you to Hannah, a nurse who worked at Royal uh, Pepworth Hospital in Cambridge. During the pandemic, while tirelessly caring for patients battling the virus, Hannah kept encouraging herself with the faith that God loves me, and He will fulfill His great purpose through this work. Multiple media outlets like the New York Times and CNN reported on how she played the piano every day at the hospital to bring hope and courage to the patients. Hannah's small act of love demonstrated the immense power of God's loving kindness in uplifting others. Remember, even in our failures and weakness, God always loves us. His love is unconditional, freely given to us. Amen? Amen. It's this love that provides us with the strength to face tomorrow. Hallelujah. The second reason Jeremiah had hope is that he trusted in God's plan. Let's read chapter 3, verse 22. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. Amen. We are not destroyed. We do not fall. God never makes mistakes. Even though we may not understand why we are going through such trials or pain, or just trust in God. 
There is undoubtedly a purpose. When you trust God, believe that He will act in His time and His way. Do you remember the 2018 Tam Luang Cave Rescue in Chiang Rai, Thailand? Twelve boys and their soccer coach were trapped in cave. And after 18 days of a long rescue operation, they were all saved. Major news outlet reported how the rescue mission faced multiple failures and challenges. But the rescuers never gave up, constantly adjusting their plans. It was later revealed that the boys and their coach prayed to God and meditated and encouraged one another during their ordeal. Media outlets such as a, a Christian Post and CBN and BBC share that some of the rescued boys were supported by a Christian NGO, Compassion Canada. One boy's parents said, we are so happy to hear our son is out of the cave. This is God's love for our family. God is great love and there is nothing he cannot do. Amen, amen. Their rescue became a testimony of how God's plan and protection worked. When you trust God, stop worrying. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 states, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Hallelujah! Amen? Amen! When we trust in God's plan, we can always find hope. No matter the situation, no matter what circumstance you are in. I want you to know that. Lastly, Jeremiah had hope is that he held on to God's faithfulness. Let's read chapter 3, verse 23. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. It's beautiful, beautiful. Every single morning as I wake up, I feel God's love. I feel God's amazing uh, grace and amazing love. Maybe you may not know, but me, if you reach my age, you will understand what I'm talking about. Every morning is fresh. Every morning is new. God is still there. Let me share an incredible story with you. This couple, Mr. Honest and Mrs. Ruby Obo, from the Church of Pentecost at Ivy Assembly in the new Manprobi district, tried for many years to have a child. The doctor said it was impossible. But they continued praying, believing in God's faithfulness. Miraculously, after 11 years' prayers, they conceived the child naturally. They joyfully shared their testimony of God's faithfulness and dedicated their son, Eguse, which means jewel to God. Isn't that amazing? That's so awesome. God is always faithful. He never forgets. His promise to us and kept them until the end. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 tells us, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. When we rely on his faithful God, our future can be bright. Is your future bright? Do we have tomorrow what you wanted to give up? You see your tomorrow is dark. We definitely have a tomorrow. As we hold on God's loving kindness, His plan, and His faithfulness, we can find true hope even in the most challenging circumstance. Lastly, let's remember Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's right, everyone, we have tomorrow, and that tomorrow is filled with the hope of God. Sometimes, maybe God may say to your prayers, no, or sometimes God may say, just wait, don't give up, keep on praying, keep holding God's hand, and God will lead you, God will take care of you, God will provide strength, God will give you answer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for keeping us Jesus Christ. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for saving us. But Father, so many times we just wanted to give up. So many times as we face hardship and difficult times, we just, just fall into desperation. Father, let us not forget 
your faithfulness. Let us not forget your power. Let us not forget your loving kindness. You never forget about us. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for everlasting life. Now I'm asking your abundant blessing, in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, to every one of us here, as well as our family, our churches, and our countries, all the medical staff taking care of patients, all the missionaries, ministers spreading your word throughout the world, all the soldiers fighting for peace and freedom throughout the countries, bring them home safely. Amen.